Good morning. In this video, we're going to continue on looking at uh, uh, Robert Blake's defense of the, uh, the evil confederacy, I call it evil, because it's really the defense of slavery. And if you don't believe me, this is a, a speech that was given by their vice president. Uh, Stevens, Andrew Stevens, Alexander Stevens, I don't know guy's name, Alexander Stevens, and um, let's see, the, cornerstone, the cornerstone speech is so called because Stevens used the word cornerstone to describe the great truth of white supremacy and black subordination upon which secession and confederation were based. Its foundations are laid as cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. This our new government is the first in the history of the world based on the great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. Using biblical imagery, imagery, Stevens argued that the divine laws consigned, consigned African Americans to slavery substratum uh, in, uh, to our society by saying, our confederacy is founded on principles in strict conformity, conformity with these laws. The stone which was rejected by the first by the first builders has become chief of the corner, the real cornerstone in our new edifice. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stephen's speech declared that the disagreements over the enslavement of African Americans was the immediate cause of secession, and the and the and Confederate Constitution had resolved such such issues, saying the new Constitution. Has put forever all the educating, educating, educating questions relating to this peculiar institution. African slavery has existed among us, the proper status of the Negro in our former civilization. This was immediate, the immediate cause of the late rap rupture, not the tariffs. Not the tariffs, people. He is the vice president of the Confederacy. Of the late rupture and present revolution. Revolution of secession. Jefferson and his forecast had anticipated this as upon a rock. Upon the old union was split, he was right. What was conjecture with him is now a realized fact. But whether he fully comprehended the great truth upon which that rock had uh, stood and stands may be doubted. The prevailing ideas entertained by him and the most leading statesmen of the time of the formation of the old constitution was that the enslavement of the African was in violation of the laws of nature. That it was wrong in principle, socially, moral and, moral, morally and politically. It was an evil they knew not how well to deal with, not well how to deal with. But the general opinion of the day, of the men of that day, was that somehow or, or, or other, or other in the in the order of providence, the institution would be evanescent and pass away. Those ideas, however, were fundamentally wrong. They rested upon the assumption of the equality of races. This was an error. It was a sandy foundation, and the idea of government built upon that that the storm came and the wind blew and fell. Uh, he said that the uh, Stevens contended that the advance in progress and the, and the sciences proved that the 18th century was a uh, view that all men were created equal was erroneous and that all men were not created equal. He stated that advances in science in, in, uh, proved that the enslavement of African Americans by white men was justified and that it conceded with Biblical Bible's teachings. He also stated that the Confederacy was the first country in the world, the first country in the world founded on the principle of racial supremacy. Let's see here. Our new, gov our new government is founded upon exactly the opposite ideas from the Declaration of Independence. Its foundations are laid, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race is his natural normal condition, this our new government is the first in the history of the world, based upon this great physical, great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. The truth has been slow in its process of development, like other truths in the various departments of science. And he goes on here, and uh, the constitutional differences. Uh, let's see. He points out the different constitution differences and the, the Confederate Constitution has eliminated the tariffs and prohibited the central government from spending on internal improvements. Uh, okay. Um. 
This is after the war, Stevens, uh, Stevens attempted to retroactively, retroactively downplay the importance of slavery as the cause of Confederacy secession. In, eight, in an 1865 di uh, diary entry, he accused reporters of having misquoted him and that constitutional issues were more important. He further expounded his allegation in the 1868 book, A Constitutional view, view of the Late War Between the States. According to one scholar, the amount of misquotations alleged by Stevens after the war is so numerous to be highly unlikely. There was a misconception that Jefferson Davis, the Confederacy leader, was outraged by Stevens' admission that slavery was the reason behind the slave states' succession as the former was attempting to garner foreign support for a nascent uh, regime from, nation, from countries that were not very accepting of slavery. However, there is no evidence that this actually happened. Stevens Davis' latest wife, Arena, did not discuss any such a disagreement in their respective autobiographies, nor did Stevens' official biographies. The first mentions of uh, Davis' uh, supposed reaction was a 1959 biography of Davis by Hudson Strode, who appears to prevent his own conjecture as fact. So there you have the Vice President of the uh, Confederacy talking about the issue of slavery being the cornerstone, the immediate cause, the immediate cause of, of the war. So let's go back here and... Uh, See what, and remember, people, I'm not the one starting this. Breaker's the one bringing this up. Why is Breaker attacking our history? Why is Breaker trying to take Lincoln, Lincoln off of uh, Mount Rushmore? No different than Antifa. No different than Antifa. He's, he's trying to destroy our history with lies. So we are about uh, 2954 in. Sure. Well, General. Uh General Ewell commanded the, the General Lee's Corps uh, near Richmond. And I remember we were called up one day and took the Doggettown Road and from mile or two, I don't know when. Never counted distances at a time in those days. <clears throat> we turned off from the road, made the road, and went down a road through a wood. After a while, came through an opening, and there was a line of blue boys and some artillery. And we charged them, and that's where I was struck the first and only time in my leg, which led me up uh, two months. I was sent home on furlough. Now, I want to bring in one or two little points there that might be of interest to some. We were around Richmond, my regiment was, all the time then, on doing little of nothing, while the war was still going on, and after a while, a Saturday evening, the first day of April, 1865, we were ordered and by the way, in the meantime, about half of my regiment had lost their horses. The Confederate soldiers owned their own horses. And when they lost a horse, it was difficult at that stage to secure a substitute. Anyhow, I lost mine. I've forgotten just now how. I don't, don't, believe, I don't believe it was in battle, however, at that time. <clears throat> now, orders came for a dismounted part, or demounted, I might say, of the regiment to fall in line and march. We stopped on the way and spent the night at a Saturday night. The next day was a beautiful day, Sunday. We didn't know what was going on. We were, we were within a mile of Richmond, and there was a turmoil there. And that day, as you all know, that day, the uh, President Davis was attending his usual services at his church, St. Paul's Church, right in the midst of the sermon. The door, front door opened, and a courier rushed in and read it, went up to President Davis, handed him the paper. He opened it, and it was a dispatch from General Lee saying, Mr. President, I am so heavily pressed by the enemy that I am compelled to abandon Petersburg 
Mr. Davis arose and left, and the public, the uh, congregation broke up, and in a few minutes almost, it was pandemonium then in Richmond. We marched out of Richmond early the next morning, on the 3rd, and started in a southeasterly direction. I really didn't know which way, uh, which way and uh, where we were going, but afterwards it showed that we were attempting, under General Ewell's command, to uh, come in contact with General Lee somewhere down uh, southwest of Petersburg. Well, the Federals under General Sheridan overtook us, our command of about 3,000, at in Emilia, at in Emilia County, Virginia, and after fighting several hours, why, General Ewell surrendered us, and thus I became a captive. I went to prison along with this command, and we landed in Point Lookout, Maryland, down here. And the day after we reached there, as a curious boy, I rose pretty early. we just gotten there the afternoon before. I rose pretty early and went out to see how things looked around in there. Was a, there were 20,000 of us, a large encampment. Heaven as we look across in one direction, I don't know which, well, there was a flagpole and a flag on it just rising. I stopped and looked at it with curiosity. It stopped when it got halfway. Well, I knew what halfway uh, flag on a pole meant. I looked at it, I thought, well, the rope that handles that flag must have a knot in it, and I will see a man presently going up that pole to untangle it. I waited a whole minute, and I casually turned my face in another direction, and there was another flag pole with flag half mast already. So I put my head in the tent, and there were five, six others of us. I said, boys, there must be some big Yankee dead. I wonder who it can be. Of course, we had no means of knowing. And then we waited for about an hour. And the sergeant blew a bugle. We, 150 of my company, fell in. And as soon as he finished calling our name, a number of us rushed up and said, Sergeant, what does the half flag mean? He stays there. He says, President Lincoln was shot last night. Well, the, uh, the feeling, the variety of feeling that came over us 20,000 men in just that one. Of course, there were several other prisons, as you know. But as for me, and a boy, just 19, I didn't know what to think. I couldn't feel any hatred toward Mr. Lincoln, especially. I didn't feel any special hatred toward any federal soldier. And when... By the way... President Lincoln's wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, was a very wicked woman. During the Civil War, while they were in the White House, she would conduct and hold seances in the White House, in which she and other people would hold hands around the table and summon demons to come and talk to them. Now, I think uh, Franklin Roosevelt's wife did that as well, Eleanor Roosevelt, if I remember right, because... Uh, don't you remember when uh, Hillary Clinton was in the White House and how she said, oh, the ghost of Eleanor, you know, we hold seances to talk to Eleanor uh, Roosevelt. So at least three presidents have done satanic rituals and speaking to demons in the White House. And Abraham Lincoln, it, it sounds like, was the first, his wife. No, his wife was. Because his son died in the White House. He never was involved in that. See how he maligns the history of Lincoln? No one's ever said Lincoln was involved in that. Just throwing that out there for you. Yeah, you're just throwing that out there like a lie you are. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder about a guy like that. Yeah, you wonder about a guy like that. You foul mouth liar. And I began to think how kindly General Grant afterwards on the 9th... Reagan's wife was involved in that. Are you going to attack Reagan too? Reagan's wife was involved in that too. Mystical garbage. General Lee. See, no different than Antifa people. No different than Antifa. 
What does Lincoln's wife have to do with Lincoln? He didn't, he didn't say Lincoln was involved in that stuff. She was involved in that stuff. Reagan's wife was involved in that stuff after he was almost assassinated. But they lost the child in, uh, in the White House. So his wife became basically hysterical. I felt kindly to it. Now, comes up the question of what we Southern soldiers fought for. My friends, as a boy. All right. He says, now here's the question. What did we fight for? Here is a Southerner. He's about to tell you, this is why I fought. Now, you've been taught that the South was fighting for slavery. Now, let's hear if this is what he says. It doesn't matter what you, what individual Southern soldier was fighting for. The issue is what the Confederacy stood for. And you want to see what the Vice President wrote about what they were fighting for. That the Confederacy would be the first nation in history based on the cornerstone of racial superiority. That's according to the Vice President of the Confederacy. Is this what he was fighting for? He was fighting because he was a mean, hateful man that wanted to put black people in bondage? The Confederate, Confederate Constitution did. That's what the Constitution wrote. They wrote in there. This man will say anything and will defend his great-great-great-grandfather. <laughs> no one cares about. Or have you been lied to? No, we've been lied to, but you, Robert Baker. You're the liar. No one denies what individual soldiers are fighting for. You think every German fighting in World War II is fighting for Nazism? No, they're fighting for the homeland. They're fighting for Germany. Most, many of them didn't, didn't care one whit about the Nazis. But the fact of the matter is that's irrelevant. Because if they had won, Nazism would have won. This is the type of warped thinking that this guy has. They say the Civil War is all about slavery and it's white people who just wanted slaves. Let's find out from the witness who was there. One guy. Why don't you go to uh, the Cornerstone speech and read Alexander, uh, Alexander, Alexander Stevens, Stevens. He won't do that. President Alexander H. Stevens. Go to the, go to the uh, uh, Confederate Constitution. Who fought, who took a bullet in his leg. Okay. To fight the invaders. Yeah. Let's see what he said. What do you think the Germans were fighting for? We think the Germans, when the Russians were invading them in World War II. Most of them were fighting for keeping Nazism going. They were trying to keep people out of their homeland. But that's going to now change everything? Because the individual soldier wasn't fighting for a particular cause? No, if, if the, what you ask is, if they had won, what would the Confederacy look like? It would have perpetuated African-American slavery. Perpetuated Negro slavery. Because it's written in their constitution. I was 16 and a half years old. I didn't think about any of abolition of slavery. My mind wasn't developed enough. You're talking about 16, you see, now he's saying his mind wasn't developed enough to talk about slavery, by Professor Lee. He's, he's not even dealing with a fully developed man. This is how, this is how corrupt Robert Breaker is. He's not even talking about the witness of a fully developed man who would have the mind to be able to think about these issues. He's talking about a 16 year old who's fighting. To take in what the politicians had in mind, and hence, there was no trouble as to the freedom of the slaves. About half of the Negroes, my father's Negroes, left and went to Norfolk to be under, as they considered, protection, but another half, 40, 50 of them, remained there and cultivated the crops until after the war. The South did not fight for the preservation or extension of slavery. 
Oh, it didn't. He goes like this. Oh, why was it in the Constitution then? Here's a guy who meets a 16-year-old. 16, he didn't know what the issue, political issues were. But now he's making a defense. It, didn't, it did not fight for the expansion of slavery. And Robert Blake gets up. Oh, wow, that settles it. It's in a Constitution, people. All right, you're listening to Black Lives Matter. You're listening to Antifa. You're listening to the Democrats. I'm listening to a guy with, who's no different than Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Because he just lied to you about Lincoln. He just, he just, he just, uh, 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 uh cast false accusations against Lincoln because something his wife was doing. He's no different than Antifa and Black Lives Matter going after Lincoln on Mount Rushmore. No different. He claimed Lincoln started the war. He's no different. Democratic Party, you're listening to the Revolutionary Revolutionist Movement. White people are evil in the South. They hate black people. It's all about slavery. Here's a man who fought in the South and he says, we didn't... Uh, 16 years old. When he fought, he knew the political issues, but the vice president of the Confederacy knew the issues. Alexander Stevens knew the issues, and their constitution has the issue in their constitution that Negro slavery, Negro slavery, would be allowed to expand without restriction. They didn't fight to preserve slavery. Are you going to listen to them? Who are the communists, pro-commies, that want to kill everyone? Or are you going to listen to the mouth of the guy who was there? He was in a court of law. You would listen to the witness. Here's a witness. General, yeah, here's a witness who has nothing to do with the issues. He was a 16-year-old at the time. Just 16-year-old. Here's uh, Frederick Douglass. Remember, Robert Blake is talking about witnesses. And remember, he's always saying, oh, well, the, uh, you know, the Christians. You know, if, if you got, you know, the Christians would never, you know, they don't, they don't beat their slaves and stuff. And here's, here's what, well, here's what uh, Frederick Douglass says. An escaped slave who, by the way, uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa tore down his statue. It says here, very near, page sixty nine, very near Mister, uh, very near Mister Free, Freeland lived with uh, the Daniel, lived the Daniel, Reverend Daniel Whedon, in the same neighborhood lived the Reverend Rigby Hopkins. These were members and ministers of the Reformed Methodist Church. Mister Whedon owned, among others, a, a woman slave whose name I have forgotten. This woman's back for weeks was kept literally raw, made so by the lash of this merciless religious religious wretch. He used to hide. He used to hide. He used to hide hands. His maxim was: behave well or behave ill. It is the duty of a master occasionally to whip a slave to remind him of his master's authority. Such was his theory, and such was such his practice. Mister Hopkins was even worse than Mister Weedon. His chief boast was that his ability to manage slaves. The peculiar feature of his government was that of uh, that of whipping slaves in advance of deserving it. He always managed to have one or more of his slaves to whip every Monday morning. He did this to alarm their fears and to strike terror unto those who escaped. His plan was to whip for, whip for the smallest offenses to prevent the commission of large ones. Mr. Hopkins could always find some excuse for whipping a slave. It would, it would astonish one unaccustomed to a slave holding life to see what, uh, see what, what wonderful ease a slaveholder, a slaveholder could find things for which to make a, occasion to whip a slave. A mere look, word, or motion, a mistake, accent, or want of power, all matters for which a slave may be whipped at any time. Does a slave look dissatisfied? It is said he has the devil in him, and he must be whipped out. And it must be whipped out. Does he speak loudly when spoken to by his master? Then he gets he gets he is getting high minded and should be taken down a buttonhole lower. Does he forget to pull off his hat at the approach of a white a white person? Then he is whining in reverence and should be whipped for that for it. Does he ever venture to vindicate his conduct when censored for it? Then he is guilty of imp impudence, one of the greatest crimes for which a slave can be guilty. Does he ever venture to suggest a different mode of doing things from the pointed out from that pointed out by his master? He is indeed presumptuous and is getting above himself, and thus nothing less than a flogging will do for him. Does he, uh, while plowing, break a plow, or while hoeing, break a hoe? It is owing to his carelessness and for and for it. The slave must 
always be whipped. Mr. Hopkins could always find something of this sort to justify the use of the lash, and he seldom failed to embrace such opportunities. There was not a man in the whole country with whom slaves who had, a great, uh, who had the getting, uh, getting their own home would not prefer to live rather than with the uh, Reverend Mr. Hopkins. Uh, let's see. And yet there was not a man anywhere around, anywhere around who made high professions of religion, was more active in revivals, more attentive to the class, love feast, prayer, and preaching meetings, or more devotional to his family than that prayed together later, louder and longer than the same reverend slave driver, Rigby Hopkins. Um, so, yes, there's this. You want some evidence? Yeah, here you go. He'd uh, escape slave. This is the good mindset. He, as is well known, was making arrangements to free his negroes, and his father-in-law had already gone up a cook. It was almost virtually impossible to free blacks by that time in, in, in Southern history in 1860. It was virtually impossible to free a, free a black. They had passed laws that basically made it very, very difficult to free a, a black person. Follow his will. Free his negroes. My friend, it was a great curse on this country that we had slavery. And I thank God... That's God. true. There you go. Amen. It was a great curse on this country that we had slavery. On that we can agree with. Lincoln would agree with that. That I did not bring up my boys and girls under a system of slavery under which I was brought. Amen. Here we go. There we go. He's happy that slavery got ended. He was happy. He's glad. You know what he's meaning here? He's glad the Confederacy lost. He is glad the Confederacy lost. Because if the Confederacy had won, they would have been brought up under a system of slavery. What did you boys fight for then? Okay. Here's what great many people do not know. That as a young man that way, I couldn't understand it fully. But I look back now and see my part in it and saw what we struggled for. And that was for states' rights. States' rights. States' oh. rights. <coughs> no such thing as states' rights. States don't have rights. Individuals have rights. States don't have rights. States' rights. Hmm. Wow. And as that many of you know, immediately after the war, the rights of the various states well, especially in the South, were very much curtailed, if I may use that word. Mm. And since then, I have noticed. He's talking about the carpetbaggers. If you don't know your history, look at the time of... Oh, the carpetbaggers. <laughs> and what the scallywags. People came down, there was, there was a great vacuum going on in the South. It was, just, it was desolating, devastating. And so you had people come in and take advantage of, of, of that. No question about it. Just like the black slaves were being taken advantage by the, the whites in the South and being kept on the plantations as essentially serfs. Using their labor and paying them nothing for it. History called the Reconstruction. Yeah. And how the South was abused. The South was abused. Well, the, point, the real issue was that Lincoln got assassinated. And that led to a very much, a very difficult peace for the South. But the South was, was, was uh, stiff-necked. And that was a, many pro a big problem. Because they refused to accept the fact they'd lost. And that slavery was going to be dead. And they refused to accept the blacks as equals. No difference than Jews and Gentiles. The Jews refused to accept the Gentiles as equals. When the church was being formed. Uh, look into the Negro League and how they abused people. Uh, look into what happened after the war. And you'll see there was a lot of crimes against the Southern people. And it was sad. That was sad. Yeah, a lot of things happened bad on both sides. What does that have to do with the fact that the Confederates who was fighting for slavery? But let's continue listening. You let things come up that encroach on the ordinary states' rights, which we have preserved. See, now they want to talk about states' rights. 
they're trying to create their own country. And now they want to go back and say, no, our states have rights. Yeah, under the Constitution. If you want to talk about states having rights, which is it's really individual rights, but the states basically are forming in, you're going into Congress and able to do things. They rejected that. They rejected states' rights because they left. They re they rejected it. We don't, you know, we do, we're not going to use, you know, uh, the the constitutional abilities to stop, you know, stop this or stop that. They just said, no, we're going to form our own nation. Now they want to talk about states' rights. And we find that the North, the boys that wore the blue over with us in preservation of the states' rights. All right, I'm going to stop there because that's the end. He just reiterates in this video what he said. So he takes one guy and he says, here, see, this guy's telling you we didn't fight for slavery. <laughs> Jeez. This is, this, is, this is what they call history. This is the superficial nonsense that they want to call history. Guy, hey, you don't see him mention terrorists, people. <laughs> he mentioned one word about the terrorists. But what was stated there? He said, I didn't fight for slavery. He didn't know what's going on. He was 16 years old, people. And no one questions the fact that probably the individual soldier wasn't fighting for slavery. But if they had won, that's what have, that would have been continued, slavery. See, Robert Baker doesn't want to tell you what would have happened had the South won. That's what they want to lie about. He maligns Lincoln by associating with the occult. Lincoln was a Christian. And then he wants to say to you that, oh, because some individual soldiers weren't fighting for the slavery, the war wasn't over slavery. I was a southerner who fought against invaders that came into my land. Invaders? No. That's federal, that's, that's, that's the United States of America. They were in rebellion. Just like the United States sending, if we send, a, we send uh, people into Oregon, then they were in insurrection. To invade me. And we were fighting for our rights. You have no rights. You're talking about your rights while keeping three million other people under subjection as slaves. The hypocrisy is gone. They won't talk about their rights while three million other people were being kept as slaves. That's the hypocrisy. Our state's right. Our right to govern ourselves. You know what? Under the Constitution, there's a system set up by which the state operates within a federal system. And that system was still intact when you guys left, when secession happened, when the South left. You had no excuse to leave. No one's violating any of your state's rights. You had senators. You had congressmen. You had a Supreme Court. You had the right to vote. They were shutting down free speech in the, in the Congress. There's called the gag rule, where you couldn't even make, people couldn't even argue for the, the right for slavery to end. You couldn't be a, someone going to the South and bring abolitionist literature into the South. They'd kill you. You couldn't be a preacher in the South and be against slavery, they would kill you. Had Robert Blake existed in the time of 1860, he'd been pro-slavery. That's why the denominations split people. Every denomination split up this issue. He mentioned thought, well, the occult, you know, and the Universalists and the uh, Unitarians and the uh, Quakers. The man is a, a liar. The man can't help lying. Folks, the first war, the American Revolution, was no taxation without representation. The second, the Civil War, was all about that. You had representation. What are you lying for? How did you not have representation? You had two senators. You were all represented because you had the three-fifth rule. The black man was, was counted as three-fifths of a citizen, even though he didn't have the right to vote. So that means, in terms of Congress, the South was actually overrepresented. And then, ironically, when the blacks even got, they got their citizenship, they got more representation. Even though there was, their vote was subject, uh, 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 subject, uh, 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 
you know, they kept the, they kept the vote uh, uh, down from the blacks. So the blacks vote, vote in the South. They were considered citizens. So that even added more to the strength of, of the Congress in the uh, South because uh, the, uh, the the Negro vote was kept down. They made they they did everything they could to keep that vote the blacks from voting. Tax thing as well. It was all about, we want the right to govern ourselves. The King of England said, no, you don't, you don't need that. Well, all right, we fight. The South... We had, Thomas Jefferson puts up a whole long list of grievances of why revolution was necessary. We didn't just say, we're seceding. We said, we're going, we have to break away. There's no right to secession. We gave a list of grievances. They never gave a list of grievances to people. That's why they started making them up seceded and said, we just want to govern ourselves. Yeah, and keep three million people under the, uh, as slaves. And expand that slavery into territories. The North said, no, you, you can't have that. They fought. Yeah, they fought. Because they were in violation of the Constitution. Because there's no nothing in the Constitution that allows secession. Well, the American Revolution, they won. And everyone says, yeah. This is not the American Revolution. This was not the American Revolution. This was a, a this is the attempt of, of secession, to break away and uh, and without any legitimate grievances uh, uh, against the North, because the their representation still existed. The American Revolution laws were being imposed on them as English citizens, without representation. They were English citizens. But they were being treated like colonies, inferior, and they were not allowed to. You know, they were going to send the juries, they were going to send these people back to England and be tried and things like that. That be tried by their peers. Uh, taxes were being passed in, in Parliament without any say from the colonists, because the British figured well, and this goes back to French and Indian War, that uh, the uh, the American colonies owed them for winning that war. And they, so they were going to put uh, taxation and things like, you know, like uh, tea and things like that. And the American, and the American colonists said, no, the, the real issue was, if we allowed this to happen, they would continue to treat us like colonies and not as full-fledged English citizens. America, same reason they fought. Oh, uh, no, not the same reason. You want to expand slavery, and it's in your constitution. And unlike the American Constitution, the American Constitution doesn't mention slavery, in particular Negro slavery. Theirs does. Civil War, and everyone says, oh, that evil South. This is the simplistic, naive way of this man thinks. But his actions, his lies are no different than Black Lives Matter and Tifa going against one of the great presidents in our history, Lincoln. And it's like, they were just fighting for freedom. No, they were, they, were, they, were, they were fighting for the right to expand slavery, keeping other people enslaved. And just like uh, Stephens, uh, Alexander Stephens said, it would be the first nation form of the principle of racial superior, superiority. So I want to bring this to you. Yeah, see, he's, he picked this fight, people. Remember that. When you all come to me and whine on my videos and talk about it, you should just be preaching the gospel. And you should just be, be preaching Bible doctrine. Remember, who picked this fight? Who picks these fights? He does. He's the one that puts videos up defending slavery. Saying that Christian is a slave because he was redeemed, you know, bought out of the, uh, the marketplace of sin, bought with a price. He picks these fights. And then when you answer him, he comes up with a sacrimonious, pompous thing. Oh, here's the gospel. I'm just preaching the gospel. He picks the fights, people. And then when he gets answered, all his little people come on there and say, you should just be preaching the gospel. You should just preach the Bible doctrine. You know, and, oh, and he'll come on there with his little sacrimonious, pompous, jackass comments. Oh, here's First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Eddie, you should just be preaching the gospel. Well, he just, he just lied to you for 40 minutes on a video about our history. If you know the truth of history and you look at yeah, it, yeah, I know the truth of history, and you, what well, you just said wasn't true. 
None of it was. You're like, uh, so why would they take this monument down again? These were just people who were trying to fight for freedom, trying to fight for the right of their state to govern themselves. No, they weren't. They were trying to fight for the right to expand slavery into territories. That's what they, that's what they wrote into the Constitution. See, that's what this thing is all about. You liar. Because <laughs> they thought they had a right to, to enslave one particular race. It's not about slavery. It is about slavery. And Alexander Stevens made that very clear the immediate cause of, slavery, of, of the war of slavery. The immediate cause. Because that was the issue of Lincoln getting elected. There's Southern Whigs, Whigs in the South. There's Whigs in there who believed in eternal and believed in tariffs and, you know, and stuff like that. And they voted, for the they voted for that tariff act. The South. Southerners voted for it. It wasn't just Northerners. Communists want to rule you. Yeah. And these neo-Confederates want to deceive you. They want to govern over you. They are dictators. Mm -hmm. They do not want you to have freedom. Mm -hmm. If anything, they want you to be enslaved yeah. to them and their political And this guy will, will lie to you about history. And he'll talk about bad. He's glad slavery is evil and stuff like that. Well, the Confederacy is for slavery. And then he's going to give you a bunch of mumbo-jumbo about the war not being about slavery. And give you some... Some guy's going to, you know, say, well, I, don't, I was 16, I don't know what I was fighting for. And they said, oh, well, war was definitely wasn't about slavery. Definitely, war was definitely, the immediate cause was about slavery. Because Lincoln had come on there and said, we're going to stop the expansion of slavery. And the slave owners, who were the political class, they're the ones that pushed the idea. No, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to accept that. So... I love the South. I love many of the things of the South. I don't like slavery. Uh, you don't like slavery. Why not? You said it was biblical, probably. Now he doesn't like slavery. Why doesn't? Why don't you like slavery, Robert? What about segregation? What about the Jim Crow laws? Oh, Ruckman liked those. He liked that stuff. See, if we live in the twenties, oh, break would be for the for the Jim Crow laws. But I do know that many of these people that were my ancestors... There we go. They were there we go. My ancestors. See that? Ancestor worship? Who cares about your ancestors? Who cares about your ancestors that didn't do? To this day, the South is known as the Bible Belt. To this day, everyone remembers, oh, the South and that Southern hospitality. Yeah, they were good folks. They were nice people. Yeah, who would say they weren't? This guy is like the dumbest of rock. <laughs> Oh, he got a reputation of Southern Hospitality and the Bible Belt. What does that mean? What does that mean have to do with people owning slaves? Nothing. <laughs> so I would encourage you to look into the Civil War. Oh, yeah, look into the Civil War. But the facts, don't look at this fake neo-Confederate neo movement. That distorts history. Uh, please go to confederateshop.com. There we go. Go to a place that a conf called Confederate, which means they would be for slavery. What does the Confederate Constitution say, Robert, in its Constitution? That the right for Negro slavery expansion to territories would not be forbidden. That's in the Constitution. And this guy wanted to acknowledge it. And get a hold of. I don't have a copy here. Remember, people, he picked this fight. So don't come to me crying and whining about him lying. Getting caught in the line. Ed, why don't you do this? Ed, why don't you do that? Leave Robert Breaker alone so he can just lie with impunity and attack. Basically, tear down one of our greatest presidents, Lincoln. But to get a hold of the Uncivil War by Mike Scruggs. And if you get that, you, get you that. will learn mm -hmm. a lot. Oh, yeah, sure. Folks, there are people in our country mm -hmm. that want to tear these statues down. Mm -hmm. burn now, again, I don't care about the statues. That's a local issue. But what, what Robert Baker has done here, he's torn down another statue by lying. Lincoln's. 
he tore down Lincoln's statue by accusing him of invading the South, starting a war, and being involved in the occult. Down buildings, right in the streets, defund the police. And it's not for a righteous cause. They are not fighting against slavery. Because, number one, we haven't had slavery for over 150 years. Yeah. Why, Robert Breaker? Why haven't we had slavery in over 50, 150 years? Oh, because the North won. Because the North won. If the South had won, the Confederacy had won, we'd still have slavery. They are using that as an excuse for them to do evil. And yet they're trying to say they're good. Now let me close with this verse. There's a verse in the Bible. This man, Robert Blake is one, probably one of the most evil men on YouTube. <laughs> he's smiling at you he's lying to you. No different than Antifa. Tearing down a statue. Tearing down, tearing down the reputation of Lincoln. Lying about the cause of the war. Lying about what the results of the war would have been. Oh, he doesn't like slavery. He doesn't like slavery. But if the Confederacy had won, that's what, have, that's what would have happened. They would have kept the slaves. Let me see if I can find it. This is why I love this program. Um, it's called uh, it's called uh, E Sword. The Bible says, "Woe unto them that call good evil and yeah, evil good." That's, that's right. Woe unto them that want to tear down one of our greatest presidents and lie about the cause of the Civil War and pretend that the Confederacy wasn't for slavery. That doesn't have it in their constitution. Woe unto them. First, he tries to say in the, on, the, on the issue. Remember, his video on slavery, he was trying to make slavery a good. That was his whole point. Well, slavery is actually a good thing. And Christians were slaves to Jesus Christ. Now he's saying slavery wasn't a good thing. Well, and it was good that, it was good that, it's good that slavery doesn't exist now. Well, why, is, why doesn't slavery, say, slavery exist now? Because the North won. Because of Abraham Lincoln. Put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and there we go. in their own sight. Yeah. Yeah. There we Do go. you think it's right to try to justify your sins of killing people and rioting and murdering and burning? That's what the Confederates did. <laughs> That's what they were doing. They thought they had a right to kill people and steal, steal property. Federal property, armories, that was federal property. Fort Sumner was a federal fort. That wasn't a state fort. They didn't like to fire on that fort. Coming down buildings and tearing down statues, and you're claiming, but we're doing the right thing because 150 years ago something happened. <laughs> <laughs> Woe unto them that justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Many of those southern people were Christians. Yes, so what? Would that mean make it sinless? What does that have to do with anything? Well, Christians can't sin? What does that have to do with the fact that many, many northerners were Christians? See how he tries to make it like, you know, many people in the north were made Christians too. Who love God and the Bible. Yeah, so many northerners. And this war is not a war on uh, on just evil people that own slaves. Only 5% of the South own slaves. Yeah, but they're the ones that led the secession movement. So blame them. Don't blame the North. Blame the, blame the 5% slave owners who got the Southerners into that war. And I gave you an example from his own mouth, a man who was in the Civil Whoa! War. Whoa! We got witness. You got one guy, a hundred said, and he was 16 years old when he fought the war. He said, oh yeah, we didn't fight for slavery. <laughs> but he said it was good that slavery, that his sons grew, didn't have to grow up under slavery. Well, why is that? Because the South lost. I did not fight for slavery. Here's the Confederate monument in downtown Pensacola, Florida, and where I live. 
right on the side, Jefferson David Davis, President of the United States of America, soldier, statesman, patriot, Christian. Well, he's he's not like Christian. Well, he's like a Christian can't make a mistake, you know. Be uh, be uh, evil. Be on the wrong side of history. The only man in our nation without a country. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? He's the one that chose to reject the United States. Yet twenty million people mourn his his death. Well, I'll tell you who don't mourn his death. Three million sal uh, 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 slaves. They don't mourn his death. Tear down this statue. They are attacking Christianity. Yeah, he attacked Christianity. He attacked Lincoln. He attacked, he attacked the United States. The history of the United States. He attacked Lincoln. Who's responsible for us not having slavery. Oh, I'm so glad we didn't, slavery doesn't exist today. Well, if Jefferson Davis had his way, it would still exist. Breaker. If Jefferson Davis was still alive and had won the war, slavery would still exist today, Breaker. And the Southern Christian values that we have held for The many Southern years. Christian values? What are Southern Christian values, people? I know Christian values, but I never heard them. Southern Christian values? Does that mean there are Northern Christian values? And our His thinking is warped, people. And yet you people listen to this guy. His mind is shot. Fight for freedom. This is not for freedom. This is to get rid of freedom and to make people communists. To make people communists. No, your, your movement lends credence to the communists. Because you tear down Lincoln. And the fact that we freed three million slaves. And you want to lie about the Confederacy who was actually there trying to keep that system in place and expand it according to your own constitution. So I just want you to know that. Yeah, you just want to know about the lie. Uh, here's something I'll close with. Hey. Uh, woo, the rebel yell. Yeah, they, they were upset when the uh, Yankees didn't give them back their, their battle flags <laughs> that we captured. Here's some of Confederate veterans of the Civil War. And the South won many battles. And they were known as Christian, and they were known as the most courageous of men. The two have nothing to do with the other. Now look at this, see that? They were known as Christian and the courageous of men. What's that to do with the courageous? Oh, you think the Northerners weren't courageous? You think the Northerners weren't Christian? You foul mouth liar. That's the implication he's trying to tell you people. That the Northerners who beat him weren't courageous. And weren't Christian. The North was said to be afraid of their rebel yell because they would run into battle and yell, Woo! Yeah! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They well, they're, they're terrified. Because they said, you know what? Give me liberty. Somehow we won some battles. Yeah, somewhere along the line, Breaker, we, we won the battles. We just had to get the right generals. They had the best generals, because the best generals are the ones who went to West Point. And they're the ones who all turned on the United States and, and, to, and went, to, went to the Southern, the Southerners. And so Lincoln had a hard time finding some good generals. But once we did, then the whole thing tied, the whole tide turned. Give me that. I just want to be free. I just want to be free. Well, uh, tell that to the slaves. Tell it to the slaves, Robert Breaker, when they want to be free. What did you say to them? What did the Confederates say to the slaves who said they want to be free? Oh, they didn't want to be free, Robert. They didn't want to be free. They wanted to be slaves. I want to be free mm -hmm. from a centralized government. Centralized government. The centralized government barely existed then. There was no personal income tax. It expanded during the Civil War, but it they also, after the Civil War, it had a great contraction as well. It didn't last, you know. But of course, the whole idea is that, you know, the, the South still had representation. No one was denying the representation. 
They had senators. They had congressmen, all represented by three fifth rule. The, the uh, Supreme Court was still dominated by the South. They all want you to forget this. To tax me and wants to invade me and wants to control every aspect of my life. Yeah. Many. Yeah. And that's what you do with the slaves, controlling every aspect of their life. You hypocrite. Historians have said slavery would have gone away on its own. Oh, here we go. Slavery would have gone away. See, they got to get to back to slavery, people. Here we come full circle. Slavery would have gone away on its own. What makes you think that? See, that's that's the little thing they always got to put in people. Well, break if they won, confess, what about slavery? How would it have gone away by its own? Only by agitation. Only by the same things happened in Britain, where they actually had paid the slave owners off, and people, there was a big, you know, big thing about, you know, fighting against slavery and, and, and uh, 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 you know, slave trade and things like that. It took them 20, 40 years. In the South, they weren't going to allow that. They'd hang you. They hung you if you tried to agitate, agitate against slavery. Like it did in Britain, like it did in many other countries. Yeah, but it did in Britain. How, and who was against slavery in Britain, Robert? Oh, the Christians. <laughs> the evangel evangelicals. Who was against slavery in Britain? Who led, the, who led the way against slavery in Britain? You hypocrite. The evangelical movement. Not the Unitarians. Not the Universalists. Not the Quakers. But the evangelicals. In less than 20 years. You don't know in less than 20 years. That's a, that's a lie. Because they had written their constitution. They weren't going to allow it. Where do you get the idea it would have ended in 20 years? No one knows that. That's why they want to keep expanding. Had they just left it alone. Oh, yeah. You see that? That's where they have to stick in. So it wasn't about slavery. Because slavery would have died by its own. You don't know that. The reason they want to expand was to keep it from dying, Robert. The reason they want to expand it was to keep it from dying. So they were, they were planning on invading Cuba. They were planning on, on expanding into Mexico. They were planning to expand it wherever they could in new territories. That was their plan. It wasn't about slavery. It was yeah. about states' rights. Yeah. From you liar. The very man who was there. Yeah, well, he, 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 he interviews one guy and says, See, that fool's my poem, one guy. The Confederate people were black. Here's a guy who had ancestors that were black that fought for the South. Mm -hmm. and he educated himself and he says, You know what? I don't think we should tear down monuments. Well, I don't think you should tear down monuments either. But neither should you lie about them either. Put a monument of the Lincoln up. Because he's the one that got you out of that system. That man was saying he's so glad that he didn't have to go up on the system by which his children were in the slave well, had the slave system existing. You can thank Lincoln for that, Robert. Oh, slavery would just have died on its own. It, died, it didn't die by its own in England. People had, to, people had to agitate for it and argue for it. And that was an evangelical movement that was fighting for it in the parliament. And it took many, many years to accomplish that. Let me see here. There you go. Wilberforce. You want to read a great book on a man, one of the great men responsible for ending slavery and uh, the slave trade. William Wilberforce. Christian. Hmm. Because they don't stand for slavery. They're remembering people... Oh, they don't stand for slavery? Your, your constitution did. Five. Who just wanted to be left alone and be free. Yes. Yeah, well, your slaves wanted to be left alone, but you wouldn't leave them alone. You wouldn't free them. You liar. They want to expand slavery into the territories because they knew slavery can't, couldn't continue to exist without expansion. So you need to thank Lincoln. Not Jefferson Davis. Had Jefferson Davis won, slavery would have existed much more longer than it did because Lincoln ended it. All right, 
I'm done. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, you don't have to say anything more, uh, Brian, uh, Robert. You've proven to be a liar, a deceiver. No, oh, you Robert Breaker people. Oh, leave Robert Breaker alone. Oh, he just lied to you, lied to you, lied to you. Southern Christian. What is a Southern Christian? I've never heard such a thing. <laughs> Southern Christian. Oh, you mean Christians from the South as opposed to Christian from the North? And they always get around back to that point. Slavery would eventually end it on its own. How? How? That's why the South was intent on expansion. They were intended, they, they had to keep expanding. They knew slavery had expanded to continue, you know, to, to survive. And they intended to invade other countries, got, got Cuba and stuff, to, to keep pushing in Mexico and stuff like that. So I'm going to stop here, put this up. Any comments, welcome, you know, from you uh, breaking people, you pro slavery people. Oh, it's good slavery ended. What well, means Confederacy is wrong? Oh, we don't fight for slavery. We fight for states' rights. Oh, to keep other people slave. You had representation in Congress. They just didn't like the results of an election, and so they took them they took their ball and went home. They said, "We're just going to break. We just we can't stand the fact that Lincoln is going to stop the expansion. The Republican Party is going to stop the expansion." Of slavery, even though Lincoln promised, I said I can't touch your, your slaves you have now, because of the Constitution. But I was elected to stop the expansion, and he was willing to make any compromise. A lot of people critical of Lincoln says he was willing to make any compromise to keep keep the North intact. But that one he wouldn't compromise on. He says that's why he got me elected. I said I'm not compromising on that. But these are lies. These lies are no different than Antifa. And Black Lives Matter. Tearing down the statue. What's the difference between tearing a statue down and tearing down a man's reputation like Lincoln? No different. By subtle insinua insinu 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 insinuation, he was trying to link Lincoln to his wife, what his wife did. Lincoln had nothing to do with the occult. And he was never associated with the occult. No one more than Reagan was. But this is how a man lies and continues to lie and he'll lie about this, he'll lie about the Bible. Because there's something wrong with the guy. He's into ancestor worship. He's more concerned about what, how people think, think about his ancestors and his heritage than he is the truth. And that's a very unstable, mentally unstable person. And he has no qualms about pulling things out of context and just putting them up there and said, and slavery would eventually end it. And you, how do you know that? Because all oh, the experts say that. Well, you would have had a constitutional amendment then put into your, your thing. How, how are you going to end it when you, you kill anybody who, who advocate ending it? <clears throat> they hang you. They would hang you if you came in there with the idea of freeing the slaves, ending slavery. That was their way of life. You know, back and forth, lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. No one cares about this. It's 150 years ago. But they do. They keep bringing it up. They keep attacking the issue, they keep attacking Lincoln. And claiming they're being, you know, a, a, a prosecu persecuted, and the war wasn't about this, and the war, war, and this is all a lie, Yankee lie, and the Yankees were lying, and Yankee carpet baggers, and Yankees this, and you know, and the, and the Southerners were, you know, all Christians and noble, you know, great, great warriors, and you know, the Yankees just came down here with a bunch of heathen, you know, and they, you know, you know, like a bunch of you know. Uh, uh, you know, barbarians coming down, you know, invade our, our space, you know, invade our country. <laughs> These guys, man. That's the fruitcakes. He's going to teach you history. 
if you're a Christian, you wouldn't treat your slaves bad. Oh, according to Frederick Douglass, you would. An escaped slave. Got it, uh, his, uh, St. Wilmness, uh, Reverend Robert uh, Sheffley, and he gives an example here, but he's talking to a dying black man. Yeah, about the dying black man, this is page 201, says, I was the whipmaster when the other slaves, done, what the other slaves done called flogger. Uh, flogger man, uh, whipmaster. I worked for a county uh, man down in Alabama. I don't understand. That county man got paid for whipping runaway slaves when they were caught. Did he make you help him? Not exactly, Big Edmund said. He and stopped his, stopped his face contorted, contorted, contorted again with pain. Robert waited. No, he never made me do it, but he gave me some pay if I would. And you whipped and flogged your own black uh, brothers? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, uh, yes, Lord. Big um, uh, Edmund cried out in pain and remorse that he seemed, like, seemed to strike him simultaneously. Robert moved his chair closer to the bed and wiped the tear-swollen tear eyes of the dying man. God will forgive you for that. And when you get to glory, every man will, you flog will forgive you. No, they won't. I whipped some of them until their eyes rolled back in their heads. God and Ken will forgive you. The black man shook his head, but Robert insisted, yes, he will, and all of us in, in some way have beaten the helpless and betrayed our brothers. And he goes on. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got black, uh, blacks to, to beat them. Yeah, the Nazis did this in, in, in the concentration camps. They got Jews to kill other Jews. Let me stop put this up. You can believe who you want to believe. You can believe what you want to believe. You can believe the lies of Robert Baker. He continues to lie about particular doctrines, distorts truth, twists evidence, lies about this. He's no different than a, any guy from Antifa with a, a mask on his face, tearing down a statue by his, his insinuations and his attack on Lincoln. The reason that that guy, the 102 year old, could grow up without his children being under the system of slavery was because of Lincoln. And those northerners who came down, the northerners who fought their way into the south and ended slavery. That's who he, that's who that guy could thank. Oh, we weren't fighting for slavery. Well, the fact that his sons didn't grow up in the system of slavery was be, not because of a, a, a Jefferson Davis. It was because of Abraham Lincoln. Amen. Thank you.